A Reddit, asks, a Reddit user asked the question, why is it better to run Thinkorswim using the Thinkorswim workaround instead of running Parallels in Windows? Here's the, uh, the post. Um, First person should just use the workaround, and then he asked, well, he referenced this video in which a TradeStation user runs TradeStation under Parallels um, Windows 11 or Windows 10 ARM, and says performance is fine, but he also sometimes runs Thinkorswim. So I thought I'd do a video to answer this question, because uh, I was a bit curious about it myself. This is the video of, that he references. Uh, as you can see, he's got one, two, three, looks like four monitors hooked up to uh, a base M1 studio. And these are trade station windows, and uh, sometimes he runs Thinkorswim. So, so uh, Let's go look at the answer. Uh, by the way, um, if you want, you can just read the answer yourself and uh, skip going through the video, but I thought I'd just discuss it in video form. So the Mac OS Thinkorswim kit is distributed with Intel Java, so Thinkorswim code written in Java has to be translated to Apple Silicon code by Rosetta 2. And that's costly because Java is an interpreted language, which means that there is an interpreted phase and then a translation phase. My benchmarks show that there is a performance penalty of about three times for this translation of Thinkorswim. That is, Thinkorswim running on Intel Java in Mac OS or Thinkorswim running in a Windows 11 ARM virtual machine will run three times slower than it will using the workaround. Now, uh, most Intel applications running through Rosetta 2 have a much smaller performance penalty as Rosetta 2 translates the Intel machine code to Apple Silicon code and saves the translation so performance gets better over time. So when you run an Intel program, uh, an Intel executable program, through Rosetta 2, it translates the Intel executable code to Apple Silicon code and executes it. But while it's translating it, it also saves the code. So the next time you run that program, it's faster because it doesn't have to do the translation. It's 6 o'clock. Now, with Java, Java's interpreted code. So it takes Java interpreted code converts it to machine code, and then that machine code gets translated to Apple Silicon and executed. The problem with an interpreted code is it can't save the translation. So it has to reinterpret and retranslate the code every single time you run it. And so you don't get um, a lot of the performance benefits of Rosetta 2. Now, Windows 11 does the same thing, more or less, as Rosetta 2. When you run an Intel executable on Windows ARM, you have, um, well, with Thinkorswim, it also runs through Java on Intel. And uh, that target code has to be translated to ARM to run natively, so it has the same performance penalty that you see on Mac OS. Now, the video indicates that the user runs TradeStation as their primary platform and sometimes runs Thinkorswim. Um, I suspect that TradeStation is a Windows Intel executable which is directly translatable to ARM code, so there is a much smaller performance penalty compared to Thinkorswim. Um, <coughs> my, <coughs> well, the Thinkorswim, sorry, the TradeStation web page indicates that you can run TradeStation under Wine or the Windows emulation program which allows you to run Windows programs on Mac OS. 
Uh, generally, you need an executable for that. If it was something like Java, then they would just ship uh, an Apple Silicon Java. So it's an apples to oranges comparison uh, because the Reddit user is asking about primarily using Thinkorswim as their trading platform while the video author is running TradeStation as their primary trading platform and Thinkorswim as a secondary platform. The third reason is that there is overhead running virtual machines. You are running two operating systems on your machine, which means two sets of operating systems updates, and we all know how aggressive Windows 10 and Windows 11 are about operating systems update. Two sets of anti-malware programs, two sets of networking software, and two sets of all these background processes that do all sorts of things for you. Now, one way to visualize the overhead of running Windows um, as a virtual machine under Mac OS is to look at the Geekbench 5 scores for the Windows 11 virtual machine and compare it to the host operating system Geekbench 5 numbers. So uh, these are the Geekbench 5 scores for Windows 11 virtual machine. By the way, I'm running under UTM instead of Parallels because uh, I'm cheap. Uh, my benchmarking in the past has shown that there is a very, very slight performance penalty running QEMU versus Parallels, but it's, it's negligible. So here's my uh, Windows 11 virtual machine. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, running Windows 11 Insider Preview, and I'm using one processor and six cores. So my MacBook Pro has 10 cores. Uh, it's got eight performance cores <coughs> two efficiency cores. Um, so I allocated six of them <coughs> to the Windows Virtual Machine. By the way, generally speaking, you do not want to allocate all of your cores to the Virtual Machine or else a runaway process on the Virtual Machine will basically hang uh, your Mac. So this has uh, all 10 processor cores. As you can see, it's eight performance cores and two efficiency cores. Um, I have eight gigabytes of RAM allocated to the system. <coughs> and uh, this is uh, this 32 gigabytes of RAM uh, on this MacBook Pro M1 Pro. So <coughs> the Geekbench 5 score is uh, 1295 versus 1490. That's a single core score. So this score measures general responsiveness. Now, if you look at the uh, Geekbench 5 benchmark database, generally you'll see a number of about 1,700 to 1,800. The reason this is only 1,490 is I'm running low power mode on my MacBook Pro. And um, I always run low power mode on this MacBook Pro. So you lose a little performance. As you can see, the multi-core score of the full MacBook Pro under low power mode is 11347. It's in the 12,000s without low power mode. <coughs> and it's a lot lower on the virtual machine because it's only using six of the cores. But there would be a performance penalty anyways. So uh, the, my calculations on the performance penalty of running a virtual machine is 13% based on the single core scores. Uh, let's see, you have to pre-allocate RAM to the virtual machine and that's RAM that isn't available to other programs. So when you uh, set up a virtual machine, you pre-allocate the RAM. I have eight gigabytes of RAM allocated to this. So that eight gigabytes of RAM is not available to the base operating system. And um, you, might, you're, you might allocate eight gigabytes of RAM, but your program might only be using three gigabytes of RAM, but the Windows virtual machine is still gonna use up eight gigabytes of RAM, which isn't available to the host. Uh, less flexibility, well, reason five, less flexibility in dealing with virtual desktops as Windows doesn't support individual virtual desktops and Mac OS does. Uh, a lot of people running uh, complicated thinkorswim or trade station programs where you need the horsepower uh, uh, do have multiple monitors. And uh, with Mac OS, each monitor uh, can have its own 
virtual desktop. So you can keep one monitor the same while you change desktops on the other monitor. And um, that's actually the primary reason why I went from Windows to Mac OS. I, and back in 2020, I built a big Windows desktop to run Thinkorswim. And then I found out that Windows doesn't have virtual desktops or independent virtual desktops. So I did a lot of uh, reading up on the situation and Microsoft promised independent virtual desktops for Windows 10 several times, but they never delivered. Then Windows 11 came out and uh, they promised it in Windows 11 and so far uh, it is not in Windows 11. So <coughs> that was a big motivation for me <coughs> to go back to Mac OS because I rely on independent virtual desktops heavily uh, when doing my trading stuff. So uh, those are the reasons I have for running the TOS workaround instead of running um, Thinkorswim in uh, Parallels Virtual Machine. Um, that's, uh, those are the results of my <coughs> benchmarking and analysis. Um, you can always try it out yourself. Uh, oh, yeah, there's kind of one other disadvantage of uh, r running in parallels, and that's uh, rental cost of parallels of, I think it's a dollar a hundred slash year for purchase. Uh, license for dollar one thirty, but no updates. So that's a reason, and uh, you can use UTM, and I do use UTM uh, when I need to run Windows, but uh, UTM is a ton more work to set up than Parallels is. I, I have a video showing you how to set up uh, UTM uh, Windows 11 virtual machines. And uh, you can get, you can run Windows, you know, completely free. Um, but uh, it takes more effort. But you also do get updates. So, um, that's my video. If you disagree, uh, put it, put something in the comments and let me know why. <laughs>